Greetings, I'm Steve Blomfield from Bible for All Nations. We're looking at reform forming the prophetic movement because the prophetic movement has descended into the bizarre and often the occultic. And um, it's just a now it's a disaster. It's very, very far from what the Bible talks about prophetic ministry. One of, the, one of the things we're going to look at today is the ministry of Balaam, the prophet, uh, the false prophet or the deceived prophet in Numbers, in the book of Numbers. Before I go on to his story, I just want to mention a few things. Number one, um, there is a natural realm and there's a spiritual realm. We walk, we walk in both realms. The, the natural realm is governed by laws of physics and maths and science. The way we reproduce, the way we grow, the way that we organize technology and everything, it's, it's done by um, science. We use the laws of science. We architecture and making buildings and uh, creating medicines, running our computers, it's all done by science. And behind the science is physics and maths, especially maths. So there's, there's a natural realm, but there's also a spiritual realm. There's the realm where God is. There's God and angels, there's Satan and his demons. Because of, uh, because of this, uh, we need to look for something that can tell us about the spiritual realm. And that is the Bible. The Bible tells us about Jesus Christ. History will tell us a little bit about Jesus, but the Bible tells us about God and about Satan, and that Satan is the one behind all the evil in the world, and God is the one who rules the world. But um, <clears throat> now you cannot see or touch God. So an atheist can honestly say that he doesn't see God, and he's never seen any evidence of God. And that's true. Um, looking at the world, the world seems to be governed by science laws. And it, uh, he looks at people and he, people are so perfect. The world, flowers are so perfect, bees are so perfect, fl uh, birds are so perfect, that he concludes it's all by evolution. So, you know, um, he cannot see God. But if he picks up the Bible and he reads the Bible, and if the Holy Spirit uh, heals his blindness, his spiritual blindness, he will then see God, and he will know that God is there. And God is very much alive and very much involved in the world and in our lives. You can look at my testimonies on YouTube, Steve Blomfield, and see how many testimonies. I'm just an ordinary guy. Who's seen so many miracles in his life. And so I've walked in the spiritual realm and the natural realm. So there is a spiritual realm and there is a natural realm. And the way we find out what is what is by reading the Bible. The Bible is not a, 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 a book like history. It's a spiritual book. It's a book which was uh, intended to be read by us to look into the spiritual realm and to understand who God is, the way he works, and that there is evil and there's deception. And that is all organized by Satan, his arch enemy. Um, now, uh, Satan does have power. Now, if you're a Westerner, American, or, or, or European, it's difficult for you to believe that Satan has got power. You, but you only have to look at the First World War. Something like 20 million people were killed. The Second World War, 50 million people were killed. And, uh, and the, the, the German race actually sympathized with Hitler in killing 6 million Jews in, in prison of war camps. Many of them were raped. Uh, women were abused and raped. And they suffered incredibly cruel deaths. There is an evil in the world. 
But now let's go to the Bible. The Bible tells us everything concerning the spiritual realm. And it also tells us a lot of things in the physical realm too. But we're going to concentrate on the spiritual realm now. Satan has limited power, but he does have some power. God has infinite power. Acts 8 verse 9. There was a man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. They paid attention to him for, because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. Okay? So, something was happening. It, 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 the problem with Europeans, Americans, and I'm speaking as one of them, that we've uh, grown up in a culture in which we only look at the natural realm. But we have to admit that logically speaking, this man has, must have done something, <coughs> um, something for people to believe in him. And as a person who's uh, um, been involved in the spiritual realm for over 40 years, I can tell you that, the, that Satan does have power. But his power is limited. But God's power is unlimited. So this is where we come to prophets now and false prophets. Satan can deceive false prophets. And the false prophets can often do manifestations that can only be explained by um, satanic origin. Now, let's go to, to Balaam now. Was he a prophet of God or an agent of Satan? Now remember, it's not up to our opinion. I don't want your opinion, and you mustn't want your opinion, and you mustn't want my opinion. The opinion we look to is the Word of God. The Bible interprets the Bible. Never forget this. Let me say it again. The Bible interprets the Bible. Not some great Christian um, teacher or prophet or apostle. If your teacher or your pastor or your prophet or your, or your apostle contradicts the Bible, then uh, he is not from God. Numbers 24, 15. Now let's look at this because many Christians have, have fallen into error over this verse. He took up his, 20, Numbers 24, 15, and this is talking about Balaam. Balaam took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and who knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. So Balaam went into a trance. He fell down with open eyes. And he was seeing a vision. Now, now, he might be called a seer. Because that's often what seers did. But God usually operates by a Christian being in control of his senses. He's, he's not... <coughs> a Christian is not asked to act outside of his sentence, senses. Um, so when, whenever his senses get overtaken by something else, usually it is not from God. But as I say, we need to go to the Word of God to see what is what. Now, Balaam fell down in a spirit. What spirit? Human, divine, or satanic? The whole of Scripture reveals everything. Now, let's see what the New Testament says about Balaam. Uh, 2 Peter 2.14 2, they have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed. Accursed children, forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have, fo they have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who, who loved gain from wrongdoing. But he was rebuked for his transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with a human voice and restrained the, the prophet's madness. Okay, so... In 2 Peter 2, he's talking about false prophets, and he mentions Balaam. So why do you want to fall down like Balaam? 
and you call it slain in the spirit. But this says it is in a spirit, but it's an evil spirit. So why, as you as a Christian, do you want to be uh, fall down, possessed by an evil spirit? Why? Why do you admire Balaam when clearly the scripture says he is a false prophet? Judge, uh, Jude 1 verse 11. Woe to them! They have walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. We see things this, this. Cain was jealous that his brother was accepted and he wasn't. So he murdered his brother. Okay. So there's jealousy. There's murder. Abandon themselves for the sake of gain. Do you love money? Do you crave money? Do you think of money day and night? Well, you are in the same boat as Balaam <coughs> and perished in Korah's rebellion. So are you... So Korah was a rebel. So Balaam was a rebel, a rebel against God. He loved money and was... And uh, even though God said to him, do not go with these people... He went with them. And even a donkey was put in his way to restrain him. And he did not even obey his own donkey. Revelation 2 verse 14. I have a few things against you. You have some here who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. Now, this is a, a bit of a deep verse, okay? It's a bit of a deep verse. Um, <clears throat> ba Balaam was told by God, do not go with Balak. But he went. Now, when he went to Balak and he was prophesying, God did not permit him to prophesy a curse over Israel. And he ended up prophesying blessings. And so according to Deuteronomy, according to the law, the five books of Moses, that um, if Israel obeys God, it is blessed. So if it is blessed, you cannot curse it because it is blessed. It is the same as Christians. Christians cannot be cursed by witches because they are blessed. They are blessed by God. Now what Balaam did was very clever. He got Israel to worship idols and to practice immorality so that they were no longer blessed. Because if you look at my, my uh, YouTubes <coughs> about the law, about the covenant, God made a covenant with Israel. If Israel obeyed the, the covenant law, God was going to bless Israel. But if Israel did not obey God's law, God was going to punish Israel and there was going to be disaster. So what Balaam did, he said to Balak, we've got to get these guys to, to worship idols and to practice immorality. And if they do that, then Israel will no longer have blessing on them and they will be cursed. And then you can declare war on them and defeat them. So what happened was, um, uh, what happened was Moses said, get your swords and go and kill everybody who is immoral and who is worshipping idols. And 24,000 people died that day. So yes, disaster happened to a disobedient, rebellious Israel. But it was caused by Balaam and his schemes. So Balaam was, was directly responsible for the deaths of 24,000 Israelites. And do you want to follow him? Do you want to mimic him? Do you want to fall down in church with your eyes open and say <clears throat> that falling down with your eyes open is, is from God because Balak the, the seer did it? I don't think so. But let's, let's just clarify this uh, about Balaam. Number one. God did speak to him clearly that he was not to participate in Balak's schemes. He Number two, he disobeyed God and the donkey rebuked him. 2 Peter 2.16 He still went on to participate in Balak's schemes to destroy Israel. Four, 
He loved money. 2 Peter 2.16, Jude 1.11. 5. He practiced divination. Jo- Joshua 13, verse 8. Deuteronomy, 20, Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 says, There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination. And Balak, Balaam did practice divination. Or who tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer. Or is a charmer, a medium, a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. So if you worship ancestral spirits, if you um, are a charmer or a medium, or you are a diviner, you are an abomination to God. You might go to church, you might praise, you might worship, you, you might enjoy singing in church, but on Sunday night, after all of that is done, you've got your customers who come and see you. Or you might be a customer to a spirit medium or, or a, uh, someone who practiced divination to, to try and make your business have fortune or to try and get a girlfriend for yourself. It's an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. So the, the nations, the Hittites, uh, all of the, the Canaanites were destroyed because they were practicing these abominations. And if you, you, as a Christian, you want to do the things of Balaam, you are crazy. Right, number seven. He advised Balak that Israel was blessed, but if Israel practiced idolatry and sexual immorality, that Israel would lose its blessing and become cursed. This conspiracy resulted in the deaths of 24,000 Israelites. Revelation 2 verse 14. I have a few things against you. You have put some of the, some there who, who hold the teaching of Balaam, who, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice some sexual immorality and thereby lose the blessing. Numbers 25 verse 3. So Israel yoked himself to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Do you see? Israel was was following God. Then Balaam said, "Let's get let them get involved in immorality and idolatry." And then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. So you think that God does not get angry against Israel? You are you are mistaken, my friend. You are severely mistaken. If you or anyone practices these things, you will incur the wrath of God. Read Romans one about the wrath of God. And that's in the New Testament. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and 24,000 people died. Numbers 25, verse 5. And the Moses said to the judges of Israel, Each of you kill those of his men who have yoked themselves to Baal of Peor. Nevertheless, those who... And verse 9. Nevertheless, those who died by the plague were 24,000. Okay. So even today, are you prepared to worship your dead ancestors? Are you prepared to be a spirit medium who uh, who speaks on behalf of spirits? You You are not from God, and your practices are not from God. You need to repent, and you need to repent right now. To uh, Put this video on hold and turn to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. I practiced the practices of Balaam against the counsel of... uh, Deuteronomy 18, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. (coughs) I repent of this. Number eight. He inspired Israel to eat food sacrificed to idols. Number nine. He inspired Israel to practice sexual immorality. Number ten. He he manipulated people by his super dramatic way of speaking. That's Numbers 23, 5 to 10 and Numbers 23, 18 to 24. He did it in a dramatic way. He says, um, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. (coughs) Okay, he was very dramatic. By his drama, he got uh, Balak to believe in him. And then he got Balak. You know, every time he, uh, Balaam told Balak, 
Make seven altars. Put a put a cow and a and a, and, a, and a sheep on those altars. Where was the meat going to? <laughs> Wake up, Christian. <laughs> the meat was going to Belaim. He was either going to sell it or he was going to cut it into strips and dry it. <laughs> uh, Christians, don't be deceived. This guy loved money. Okay, He loved power. He loved glory. He loved money. Do not follow Belaim. No, uh, number 11. He interpreted omens against scripture. Numbers 24 verse 1. When Belaim saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go, as at other times, to look for omens. Okay? He was a guy who looked for omens. Deuteronomy, uh, 20, Deuteronomy 18 verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who interprets omens. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations the Lord, the Lord is driving them out before you. Omens, omens, omens. You see, you see, you interpret omens. But God has given us His Word. His Word tells us about ourselves and about our future. There's no need to go to omens. Omens is an extra-biblical source of revelation. Omens are used to manipulate people, not tell them the truth. All right, even like um, Constantine. He saw a, a uh, I think it was like an eagle flying in the sky, and he also saw like a, a vision of a cross. And he said that that battle he was about to go into, he was going to be victorious. He interpreted omens. Okay. It was not from God. Um, <clears throat> now, number 10. Uh, sorry, number... Uh, 12. Balaam did hear from God. Now this is the, the tricky thing if you're a Christian. Balaam did hear from God. N Numbers 22 verse 9. God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? Verse 38. Balaam said to Balak, Behold, I have come to you. I have, now, have I now any power of my own to speak anything? The word that God puts in my mouth, that I, must I speak. And 23 verse 5, the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. Right, so Balaam said, God spoke to me, and God did speak to him. So, um, just because God has told you something or another does not mean that you're right with God, okay? It does not. God even controlled Pharaoh. God uh, controlled the people in Joseph's prison. There's so many... Um, uh, God controlled the life of Jacob. Jacob was a thief and a con man. If you're a Zimbabwean, he was Mbava. Okay, he was a bad guy. But yet, God guided his life until the time he, he made right with God when he struggled with the angel who was who was Jesus at the at the brook. So many even non Christians can hear from God. God will can speak to a non Christian in his spirit and say, Do not do this. And the person might not do that and he's saved from some disaster. Or or God might say, Do not do this. And the person knows it's Something spoke to him. Then he goes and does it, and then there's a disaster. Then he says, yeah, something said to me, don't do that. Don't go on that journey. Don't get in the car. Don't go on that route. But I went on that route, and as a result, I had a disaster. Uh, 13. Um, Balaam did speak the word of God. Verse 12 J, uh, Numbers 23, verse 12, he answered and said, Must I not ta take care to speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? You see, he did speak the word of God. Verse four, uh, Number 14, um, Balaam was persecuted for speaking what his hearers did 
not want to hear, but was the word of God. Numbers 23 verse 11. Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I, I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have done nothing but bless them. So Balaam got heat for speaking the word of God. <laughs> As a person who spoke of the word of God many, many times, I can tell you, <laughs> a prophet, okay, let me just say this. A prophet tells people what they don't know. Otherwise, why would, it, why would God want a prophet to speak? If they already know something, there's no need for a prophet. Then God will give them a teacher or a pastor. But where something is not known, and the people do not believe it, and God wants them to know something, then he will use a prophet to speak to them. So like in, in the year 2000 up to 2010, I was constantly saying to the farmers of Zimbabwe, hand over your farms to, um, to the people that the government wants to take, put on your farms. Because your farms were taken from the indigenous people a hundred years before. Now God is returning them. And the churches were even confused. Should they follow the medical should they follow the American model of democracy and human rights? And the Americans in those days supported the farmers staying on their land. <coughs> Should they support America and the farmers staying on the land, or should they say, should the church say to, should the church say to the farmers, um, no, get on the emails, get on the internet, <coughs> get on your 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 uh, email circles, and talk up against the government, try and raise protests all over the world against this. And God showed me that. The farmers must hand over their farms. So I told them something that they didn't want to hear. On one side, the Americans were saying, what, you are being abused, you have your human rights, there's no law, no law. Um, there must be democracy. And the, but the Americans did not say, hold on, if something is stolen from me, let's say my car is stolen, and I see it in a, um, a, a, a car sales lot, my car being, being sto uh, resold. I can go to the police. The police will go to the people who are reselling my car, and they will say, return this car to Mr. Bloomfield. See, if it's been stolen, it must be returned to the owner. And the, the land was stolen by the British government and the people that the British government gave the farms too. And God was saying, <clears throat> now the, t the time of this is over. You've developed the farms. you put dams. you put barns. you put roads. You've shown the local people how to farm. Now it's time for you to leave. So um, the farmers did not want to leave because they were making money. And they, were, they had a lot of respect from government and respect from people all over the world. And they were rich and they were powerful. They did not want to leave their farms. And God showed me that they should leave the farms. Those who left the farms did, were okay. Those who stayed in the farms had their crops plundered, their machines plundered, their tractors plundered, their, their, uh, often their, their houses burned down and all kinds of disasters happened. <coughs> so... Um, Balaam, so I suffered a lot of heat. A lot of my friends no longer, no longer liked me about that. I had two friends here in Bulawayo. Um, I, I went to their farm and we were shooting doves and we had a great time on his farm. And then I went back to town and then uh, several months later his farm was invaded and God said to me, go to the farm and, and, and reason with the farmer that he should hand over his farm. So I went to the farm and I persuaded him to come out of his house and uh, he was afraid of being murdered. But I went there and because I was there, he, get, he got courage that he was not going to be murdered. And he came out of his farm. He was able to take his stuff out of the farm. 
he's able to sell his ostriches, sell his machines, sell his water pumps and all of that. And he was okay, but um, he was later murdered. He was, him and his wife were murdered by hit squads. <clears throat> um, because he continued protesting that the, far, the government was no good in taking his farm. So he was, he was assassinated. And it was very sad. It was, and he was one of my good friends as well. But after, after that incident where I persuaded him to leave the farm, uh, he wouldn't speak to me. And all of, my, <laughs> all of my white friends who were sympathetic to farmers, I lost them, okay? But at least um, the church uh, listened to this word and the church decided to submit to the government as Paul and Peter said. Um, Paul in, in Romans 13 said we should submit to the government. So the, the church ended up submitting to the government instead of joining the democracy and Americans and the American way. Um, if they had joined the Americans and protested, there would have been a massive persecution on the church. I promise you. And, uh, pastors would have been imprisoned and they would have been murdered. And it would, it would not have been because they were obeying God. It would have been because they were disobeying God. You see. So uh, Balaam was persecuted for speeding what his hearers did not want to hear. As I was. I wasn't beaten up. I was just excluded. Um, and if you... The problem with being a prophet is that God asks you to tell people what they did, do not believe and what they do not want to hear. So, that automatically gives you a headache. But Jesus said, if you are persecuted for righteousness sake, live for joy, for that's exactly what happened to the former prophets who, who were murdered. So, if you're a prophet and you speak what people, which is from God and what people don't want to hear, then you are a genuine prophet. But if you tell people what they want to hear, you are not a prophet. <coughs> Balaam shows us <coughs> so number 15 Balaam was executed for his evils Joshua 13 22 alright Balaam put incredible chaos into Israel 24,000 died and it, Israelites executed Israelites It was chaotic. It was pandemonium. People lost fathers and mothers. People were uh, orphans because of it. It was a disaster. They only had to speak to Moses and say, Moses, are we allowed to worship idols? Are we allowed to be immoral? The answer was no. Uh, Balaam shows us that many people are double-minded and lose the favor of God and become lost, lost and go to hell. On one side, they are gifted with hearing from God, speaking the word of God, and even speaking what people do not want to hear. However, they love sin, they love pleasure, they love money, and they might even encourage immorality. These are the people in Matthew 7. Matthew seven twenty one, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So if you're not doing the will of your Father in heaven, you're not a Christian and you're going to burn. You might be a prophet. You might be a famous prophet. You might be a prophet uh, revered by a million people. It doesn't make any difference. You have to obey God. And how do you know you're obeying God? Look to the Bible. The Bible will tell you. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You see, someone who does not obey God is guilty of lawlessness. He does not want to obey the law of God. You see. So how can you claim you're a Christian and you're prophesying and your prophecies are accurate? Okay. But you don't obey God. You've got girlfriends. You've got you're committing adultery. You uh, you are manipulating people. You are. Um, I know in Zimbabwe, 
there's one a white robe prophet who um, every year um, he has a celebration for all of the women who conceive children through him. And if you just look at the children, many of them look like the prophet, not like the father. So I, I won't comment further on that. Their visions, their supernatural manifestations, their strange behavior does not make them men of God. Okay, let me go again. <clears throat> I see so many prophets on YouTube, and some of them are well loved and, and honored and revered. I'm talking about people in America, people who write books and their books are bestsellers. And they will tell you about their visions. They'll tell you about the time they went to, to heaven. <clears throat> Some of them might even tell you that they, they went to hell and then they went to heaven. <clears throat> they pray for the sick, the sick are healed. They, they prophesy to people. Uh, um, they, they call people out of a crowd. They tell them their names. They tell them their children's names. They tell them where, um, what city they come from, and all of this. Uh, their strange behavior does not make them men of God. Their supernatural manifestations does not make them men of God. You see, even Satan, uh, Jesus was taken by Satan to the, the, the peak of the temple. Doesn't that tell you that Satan's got power? So just because you see a miracle does not mean it's from God. I've seen people laughing. I've seen people crying. I've seen people being thrown all over a church. I saw a person hit by a handkerchief and he flew three meters back and landed on his back because of the weight of a handkerchief. Do you think that that was physics? It was not physics. It was supernatural. Where is that in the Bible, that you get a handkerchief thrown at you and you fly through the air and you land on your back? Where is that in the Bible? It's not. So it's not from God. Their love for God, their righteousness, their community harmony with the children of God, their devotion to Jesus Christ, their love for Jesus Christ is the true test of godliness. Okay. And especially money issues. If you see the people, I, I've, I've seen a guy who says, uh, give, give to the Lord's work. Right. Uh, if you want to know how to spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Thousand, T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. This guy wanted people to give millions and thousands of dollars to him. People who love money. People who are always crying out for money. People who are always saying, tithe, tithe. People who are always saying, give, give, give. The, to the Lord's work. Okay. Now, what was the Lord's work? Jesus' work was encouraging people, healing people, teaching the Word of God. Jesus did not ride a chariot. Did Jesus did not have gold rings or gold necklaces. Jesus did not have fashion clothing. His clothing was made by his mother. <coughs> it was woven by his mother. Yet you say that oh, this guy needs an airplane. Uh, I know well, I'm, I'm not going to even mention the guy's name. But first of all, he, he raised funds for a small airplane. Then he raised funds for a jet, a small jet. And then he raised money for a big jet. <laughs> and he, I think the, the jet was worth 60 million. <laughs> Don't you see that it was just a fundraiser, a, a, a clever way of fundraising? And this guy is worth, I think, over 100 million now. Does he need that money? Honestly, really. Does he need that money? Come on, Christians, wake up. Wake up. Who has blinded your eyes? Why are you giving money to these money-loving disciples of Belaim? So, uh, in summary, we can say things about Belaim. Number one, he heard from God. 
Number two, he disobeyed God. Number three, he actually plotted against Israel for Israel to lose the favor of God. He succeeded. And what happened to him? <coughs> he was executed. Where is Balaam today? He's in hell. He loved money. He, he was a diviner. He was an interpreter of omens. You see, he was a con man. And yet you want to be slain in the spirit like him. You want to have open visions like him. You say that just because someone has an open vision does not mean it's from God. The person who has that open vision must examine their lives and say, do they love righteousness? Do they love the children of God? Do they love Jesus Christ? Are they conforming their life to the life of Jesus? Is their nature the same as Jesus? Or are they obsessed with money and control over people and manipulation of people. So, Christians, please, do not be deceived. I'm speaking this with compassion in my heart. Honestly, I feel such compassion in my heart towards you. Don't be deceived. Please listen to this series. We are reforming the prophetic movement. Reforming what is sick and is a bad testimony to God, and we're reforming it to where it should be. When you are a prophet and you're speaking the word of God, definitely people are going to dislike you. You're going to lose your friends. You might even be thrown out of churches. You might even be thrown in, j in jail. You might even be tortured and executed. But as long as you are speaking the word of God, you honor God, and you're a genuine prophet. But if you please people, Manipulate people, plunder money out of their prof out of their pockets and put it in your profit. You are not of God, and you're going to burn in hell. Please listen to me. Amen.